there was an expression, a quote, J. Edgar Hoover. You know what he said? J. Edgar Hoover, the head of the FBI, he said the most dangerous thing in America is Negro unity. That is dangerous. When black men are organized, that is dangerous. A black man selling drugs is not dangerous. A black man in crypts is not dangerous. A black man that's a pyro, he's not dangerous. He, the white man is just waiting for you to end up in jail or dead. But a black man organized, unified, that's a problem. For me to get here, so I'm not gonna stand down on anything that I believe in. I'm only gonna get stronger because I'm not alone. I have a whole army around me. chapter 20 and verse 1 why do we come out here we're israel united in christ we came out to newburgh because blacks and hispanics need to be set in order the black man remember back in the 60s there was an expression a quote j edgar hoover you know what he said j edgar hoover the head of the fbi he said the most dangerous thing in america is negro unity that is dangerous when black men are organized that is dangerous a black man selling drugs is not dangerous a black man in crypts is not dangerous a black man that's a pyro he's not dangerous he the white man is just waiting for you to end up in jail or dead but a black man organized unified that's a problem. That's right. Get Matthew chapter 20 and verse 1. Listen to what Jesus Christ said to you black men. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter 20 verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of heaven is not for all nations. The kingdom of heaven is for you blacks and Hispanics. Read. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is in householder. So Christ, remember when he dealt with the people, he spoke in parables. Hold that. Get Revelation chapter 1. When Jesus Christ was speaking to the people, Christ was speaking to black people. Christ himself is black. Christ is not Caucasian. All these lying churches in Newburgh, none of these pastors are teaching the truth. Read this real quick for the people. Revelation 1 and 14. The book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hair. Who are we reading? We're reading the description of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Read it again. His head and his hair were white like wool. What people doing? have woolly hair? Black people. Black people. Black people. Black people. Read it again. His head and his hair were white like wool. See, you never knew this was in the Bible. You never heard this in your church. Read. As white as snow. And his eyes was a flame of fire. And his feet. Now John looks down at Christ's feet. And what does he say? Like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brown. Brass is brown. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they what? As if they burned in a furnace. As if they what? As if they burned in a furnace. That's why black men are not organized. Because you didn't know Jesus Christ himself was black. You didn't know Job was black. You didn't know Solomon was black. Any black man on the corner, any black man in the gang, you know why you're on that corner, you're in the gang? Because you don't know your purpose. That's the truth. We in the Bronx, we see that. We in Chicago, we see that. We in New Orleans, we see that. America's not afraid of black men that's on the corner. America's afraid of black men that are organized. Go back to this. Give me, matter of fact, give me Job 30 and 30. Job 30 and 30. MS-13 brothers, they join that gang. They don't understand. If only they were organized. Latin kings, they don't understand. If only they were organized. Christ is looking for warriors. Christ is looking for military men. Disciplined men. Read this. 
the book of Job, chapter 30, verse 30. And while we're reading this, in case you thought this is a white man's book, listen close to this. My skin is black. What color is Job? My skin is black. What color is Job? My skin is black. You didn't know this was in the Bible. Some of y'all claim that you have the knowledge of self, but you didn't know that Job is a black man. Read this again. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burned with heat. Now give me Jeremiah 8.21. Jeremiah 8.21. We're reading the same book that your lying Christian pastors open up every Sunday. But guess what? He's teaching you white supremacy. We're teaching you who you are. That's right. What we're teaching is what Kyrie Irving just said on the news. Kyrie Irving got on the news and said, I'm Shemitic. Where did Kyrie Irving learn that from? The Israelites. That's right. We teach that. Why? Because that's out the Bible. That's right. It's the truth. Black people are Shemitic. That's, right. that's our ancestor, Shem. Right. So what did white people say? Oh, gosh. Kyrie Irving, he's anti, this is anti-Semitism. No, that's not. The white man, you didn't know, he changed the definition on anti-Semitism. He changed the definition of it. He says anti-Semitism is when you are hostile or show hatred to Jewish people. Wait a minute. Kyrie Irving said, how can I be anti-Semitic if I know where I come from? What is he saying? How can I be anti-Semitic if I'm a black man, right, black right. people are already Shemitic. Right, right, right. So none of us here can be anti-Semitic. Right. Don't let the white man fool you. What do they always say? If you want to hide anything from a black man, where do you put it? In a book. In a book. Read this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 21. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. Read it again from the top. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, am I hurt? I am black. What color is Jeremiah? I am black. What color is Jeremiah? I am black. Notice what Jeremiah said in the beginning, black man. Read it again. For the hurt of the daughter of my people. Jeremiah said, for the hurt of the daughter of my people. My people. People, my people, black men, stop killing your own people. That's right. Stop killing your own people. Chinese don't get down like that. The white men don't get down like that. East Indians don't get down like that. You're the only race of men that murder your own kind. That's why nobody respects black men. But you won't respect them, right? You won't respect them, right? Nobody's going to respect you when you kill your own race. Read it again. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, am I hurt? Why did black men have more respect in the 60s? Because they defended their community. Now you have become a cancer to your community. Nobody's going to respect you. All cops are doing, they're waiting. They're watching. They're waiting to build a RICO case on you. And they're going to take everybody to jail. And then what happens? The next group of black men come on the corner. And then what happens? The cops, they wait. They wait. They wait. And then they take everybody to jail. And then guess what happens? Another group of black men come. And they sell drugs. They join gangs. They murder. The cops, they sit back and watch. They wait. They wait. They wait. And then they take everybody to jail. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. Read it again. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, am I hurt? But what makes you a different black man? When you care about your people. That's what makes you different. That's what separated Malcolm X. That's what separated Marcus Garvey. That's what separated the Panthers. Hey, believe it or not, Crips and Bloods in the beginning were not killing each other. In the beginning, they were not killing each other. But what happened? Drugs happened. Right. Crack happened. Right. Newburgh used to actually have thriving black businesses. Right. Newburgh back in the day actually had black owned businesses thriving. Right. But what happened? Drugs right. happened. Right. Drugs happened. Right. Read this. 
For the hurt of the daughter of my people, am I hurt? Oh, you think we came here to say God loves all nations? Oh, I think not. You got the wrong group. We didn't come out here to say God loves the whole world. That's not what we teach. We teach what the Bible teaches. The Bible says to get your life in order. Read it again. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, am I hurt? So you may say, all right, you're telling me get my life in order. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Get Matthew chapter 20. Look at what Jesus Christ said. Look at what Jesus Christ said, Matthew chapter 20 and up. verse 2. The book of Matthew chapter 20, verse 2. Start at verse 1. Verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man. Jesus Christ was a black man first and foremost. Jesus Christ was a black man. And don't you dare tell us color didn't matter. Right. Color always matters. Yes. Let's read it again. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder. That is a householder. Christ is speaking a parable. What's a parable? A illustrated story. Listen. Which went out early in the morning to hire laborers. Christ said, uh, the kingdom of heaven. He's breaking down when he's coming back. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain to you when I'm coming back. The kingdom of heaven is like a householder, which a man, what did he do? Which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Christ said this man went out to hire laborers into his vineyard. The vineyard represents blacks and Latinos. Christ said he sent this man out, go out and hire men into my vineyard christ is given an analogy on when he's going to return read and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day it says when he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day what is it talking about what's the labor the labor is to go out into the streets and teach that's the labor the men christ said agreed that they would go out and teach all of this is symbolic read he sent them Hold on. Come on. He sent them into his vineyard and he went out about the third hour now watch what he says he went out about the third hour Christ says come on and saw others standing idle Christ said when it comes to my return at one point of time brothers were standing idle listen good to what Christ says Christ, remember what he said. He went, sent a man out to gather laborers into his vineyard. When you are a laborer, you have a job, correct? But Christ said this man went out and saw some standing idle. Guess what? That's what we see. When we went to Chicago on street corners, we saw some black man standing idle idle when we went to baltimore on street corners we saw some black man standing idle when we went to albany what did we see some blacks and hispanics and i gotta say hispanics because hispanics are black too you know some hispanics think because they're light-skinned they're not black oh no you're black and you may say somebody speak hispanic but you still black don't think because you're light-skinned you're not called a nigger too don't get it twisted read it again and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle. So these men that were standing idle, what were they doing? Give me Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 20. The standing idle is what? Standing idle in the midst of sin. Christ, you're saying, you think Christ is just going to come. Christ said this, hold that real quick. Luke 17 verse 20. Christ is coming back. But it's our job, the men you see here in the street corner, and you brothers out here as well, is to build the kingdom. Right. We have to do work in order for Christ to return. But Christ said, before I came, I saw some of my people, the men, standing idle. Read this. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 20. And when he was the man of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. He said the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Meaning what? You can't just stay here and say, I'm waiting for Jesus Christ to return. I'm waiting for my Lord and Savior to return. Right. No, you're supposed to be doing work. Right. You're supposed to be doing work. What's the work? Give me Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. The up. work is to get young black men off street corners. Right. That's why. Because in Albany, in Newark, New Jersey, when we went to L.A., when we went to Jamaica, when we went to Miami, when we went to New Orleans, when we went to Charlotte, North Carolina, every city, black and Latino men are on street corners.
corners. Bring it out. Bring it Why? Out. Because they don't have a job. Right. Right. What do I mean when I say a job? Do I mean I'm talking about a nine to five? No. They don't know what their purpose is. Right. Right. They don't know what their purpose is. Right. That's why we out here to show you what your purpose is. Bring Read this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 20. Thy sons have fainted. The Bible says, thy sons have fainted. What has the black man fainted from? He's lost consciousness. Right. What has he lost consciousness from? He doesn't know who he is. Right. He does not know his nationality. Right. That's why crime is high in your neighborhood. Right. When you go to Newburgh, look at the black men around here. Guess what? White people do not respect you. Chinese people do not respect you. Right. East Indians do not respect you. Right. Why? Because look at the conditions of your neighborhood. Right. Look at the conditions of your neighborhood. Take a good look at Newburgh. Really examine how this city is. Who made it like that? You did. Right. You did. Right. You did. Who's committing the crimes? You are. You can't say this is the white man's fault. Did he play a part in it? Oh, yes, he did. But ultimately, before you put a gun on your waist and shoot somebody, it's the white man saying, hey, go shoot him. Go shoot him. There is no white man telling you that. You decide that. Give me Proverbs. Oh, wait, finish this. Isaiah 51 and 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. God says thy sons are at the heads of all the streets. That's what God says. This is coming out the Bible. Read it again. Thy sons have faded. They lie at the head of all the streets. It says they lie at the head of all the streets. This is talking about black and Hispanic men. Yes. You are in the Bible. Right, right. And I know y'all didn't notice. Read on. As a wild bull in a net. Why does it say as a wild bull in a net? Can you control a wild bull? Can you control a wild bull? Can you control a wild bull? No. Think about it. When you see them games they're playing in Spain, when that bull is running, what are they doing? Running away from the bull. So what do, what do people do when they see black men? Oh, God, there go them niggas. Stay away from them niggas. Them out. niggas ain't no good. That's how white people talk. I'm telling you the truth. They might call you Jeremy on your job or Raekwon on your job, but when they get home, they're calling you a nigger. That's the truth. Right. Read it again. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull. God describes the black man as a wild Bull. What is a wild bull? A wild animal. You cannot control a wild bull. That's blacks and Puerto Ricans. That's blacks and Mexicans. That's blacks and Dominicans. Read it again. Thy sons have fainted. Why does it say God? Why does God say thy sons have fainted? It starts with the sons first. Why? Because God says the man is the head of the household, yes. not the woman. God never says man and woman are equal. God never says woman is above man. God says man is above woman. Right. Hold that. Give me Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 4. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 4. Black man, for too long, you've got no respect. You haven't got no respect from your woman. You haven't got no respect from your children. How long are you going to walk this earth with no respect? The only way to get respect, first, you got to respect yourself. Right. Right. Secondly, you got to know who you are. Right. Thirdly, you got to teach your people. Right. Teach your people. Read the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 4. Read unto you, O oh men. Did God say unto you, O oh woman? Read it again. Unto you, O oh men. Who is God calling? Men. Who's God calling? Men. Who's God calling? Men. So you may say these Israelites hate black women. These Israelites hate Hispanic women. No, we do not. Yes. We're married with children and we take care of them. Right. Read it again. Unto you, O oh men, I call and my voice is to the sons of men. God is saying, I'm calling the men. God is recruiting men because what we're doing, it takes men to get the job done. Right. Women cannot lead a nation of men. When you get women to lead a nation of men, you get effeminate young boys. That's what happens. 
There is a difference between what women can accomplish and what men can accomplish. Right. There's an order. Read it again. Unto you, O men, I call. The Bible says, unto you, O men, I call. God is calling men. Right. God is calling men. What did you say? The old, the old men. Hey, the old men and the young men. The, the old man and the young man. God is calling the men. You understand? Get 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 3. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, okay, read it again for him. He thought it said old men. You're right. It's just old. So it's like old men. Exactly. Exactly. Read it again for him. Unto you, old men, I call. Right. So he said, unto you, old men, I call. Right? Give me uh, Ezekiel 34. Give me, you, sis, did you get a flyer? Did you get a flyer, sis? Give the sister a flyer. I think it's Ezekiel 34 and 20. My tabernacle is, uh, ye the sheep of my flock, the flock of my pasture is men. 34, 31. Thank you. Thank you. Read this. Ezekiel 34, 31. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 31. Bring it up. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture are men. Did it say woman? Are men. Did it say woman? Are men. Did it say children? Are men. God is dealing with men. Right. In order to fix black and Latin men, it's going to take strong men. Right. It's going to take disciplined men. You right. understand? It's going to take men to go into the worst neighborhoods to teach black and Latin men what their purpose is. Right. What their purpose is. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 10 and 12. Bring it up. Most black men, when you ask them what their purpose is, they're going to say make money. They're going to say do you. They're going to say, uh, YOLO. Most black men don't know their purpose. Right. Right. Most Hispanic men don't know their purpose. Which is why they end up in a life of crime. Right. Which is why you end up in a life of crime. Why? Because idle time is the devil's playground. Right. When you have nothing to do, that's how you end up in jail. Right. That's how you end up before a district attorney. That's how you end up in court. And oh, don't listen. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Don't be deceived when black men say they don't snitch. Trust me, they snitch. When they hear you are facing 25 to life, they are going to give everybody up. Bring it out. That's the truth. That's the truth. Right. Very, very rarely when somebody gets caught for selling drugs, for doing some type of illegal crime, and they get caught, very rarely will they say, I know what I was involved in, I made those decisions, now I got to pay the price for it myself. Exactly, I'm, I'm, that's it. Most, you know what they're going to do? Okay, tell me what you want to know. And let me know how much time is getting off my sentence. When you got five people in the car, and it's a gun in the car, right? yep. The whole destruction of the relationship falls not even half of the time by someone snitching, but just you not taking count. That's my. You, you not taking accountability. Exactly. You you right. go in the car with a bunch all, of books. All five of us is gonna sit if you. Exactly. But I'm not saying you go in the I'm car. It's your you, gun. I'm not saying for you to incriminate yourself. Right. Don't incriminate yourself. But you you the one that bought it in the car. So uh, to own up on it. But, be a man. Be a man. But, but look, nobody you knew you had the gun. I didn't have it. So why don't we get pulled over? You want to be all quiet. You know why? Because you don't want your booty hole to get stretched out. That's why. You don't want to get those ankles spread over to the side. And when you get in jail, yes, they rape you in jail. Bring it up. Yes, they're going to rape you in jail. You understand? Well, why are we saying this? Because for too long, young black men have been making the wrong decision. You understand? Give me Isaiah 42, 22. Isaiah 42. Hold oh, oh, you got Deuteronomy 10 and 12? Yes, sir. Okay, read this real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Listen good, you young men. You young brothers and young men. Listen good. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? The Bible says, what does God require of you? What the, a lot of people say, oh, I believe in God. I believe in God. 
But guess what? You're not doing what God says. God says, if you believe in me, keep my commandments. You understand? One of God's commandments is a man must have a beard. One of God. Oh, oh, guess what? One of God's commandments is you're not supposed to celebrate Thanksgiving. Right. That's right. Thanksgiving is a evil holiday. Right. Oh, you surprised, right? Oh, you're shocked. Thanksgiving is an honor of the slaughter of the Native American Indians. Right. Right. You can't change what Thanksgiving means to you. You can't say, oh, Thanksgiving is a day where we like to thank God for our meal. No, Thanksgiving is an honor of the murder of Native American Indians. Right. That's right. So when you celebrate Thanksgiving, you're honoring the slaughter of our Native American Indian brothers. Right. What's another way? Read this again. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So it says, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Meaning God requires something from you. What is it? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God and to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. It says you're supposed to serve God with all your heart. Your heart is your mind. When you serve God, you're not going to be having sex with your brother's girlfriend. Because some of y'all do that. You got a brother and you're having sex with your brother's girlfriend. That's evil. Right. Some of y'all have sex with your auntie. That's evil. Yeah. Don't act like I'm making this up. I'm not making this up. This goes down. This happens. Read it again. And now Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? So the Bible says, what does God require of you? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him. What does it mean to love God? I'm going to show you what it means to love God. You can't say I love God and you're a crib. That doesn't make sense. You can't say you love God and you G-stone. You can't say you love God and you a Latin king. That doesn't make sense. No. You can't say you love God and you an MS-13 with rosary beads. Right. You got six bodies on you and you say you love God. That doesn't, you don't love God. You love Satan. Right. That's who you love. That's who you love. You cannot tell me you sell drugs and love God. Your God is the devil. Right. Understand? Read this. Read on. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes. That's how you love God. To keep his commandments. One of the laws of God, women are not allowed to wear pants. That's one of the laws of God. Women are only supposed to wear dresses and skirts. These are commandments of God. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.